Hey designers, I'm going to give you a quick introduction to GPTs, which are a feature that's only available in the paid version of ChatGPT, which is currently ChatGPT4. The beauty of GPTs is that you can, without coding, program out a chatbot of your own that can be used for basically any purpose and you can share the link to others. The catch is the people you share it with also need to have access to the paid version of ChatGPT, otherwise they can't access your GPT. That said, I've created a couple of really neat GPTs that I've used for myself and that are going to live on in perpetuity at my institution, Arizona State University, who provided me with the paid license. So I'll show you how to create a GPT. It's really quick and easy and also tell you why you might want to do it and how to share that with others. So stay tuned. I'm Lindsay and I cover instructional design, e-learning development, and all things online teaching and learning. So I've already logged into ChatGPT. Again, I'm in the paid version. If you happen to have a couple of different accounts, you can change that in the bottom left corner here. Thanks to ASU, I've got access to ChatGPT4. You can see my many, 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 many threads I've, I've completed with ChatGPT in the left there. And in the top left, you'll see the two GPTs I've created as well as an Explore GPTs button. So I'll go ahead and give you a little peek behind the scenes at ASU's GPTs. Uh, so ASU got a license with OpenAI where we basically have our own workspace and it's partitioned off. Things we put into our ASU ChatGPT license are not going to be used to train the AI behind ChatGPT. So it's been really nice to be able to try a few things. I wouldn't be able to try it with a public uh, license of ChatGPT. Remember, anything you put into ChatGPT or any AI is going to become public unless you have guarantees that's not going to happen. So I didn't put any sensitive data into ChatGPT even through my ASU license because that could still be a problem. Um, so I put basically any publicly available information or any internal internally publicly available information was fine to put in. Um, so I've had to analyze spreadsheets to tell us how many trainings people created. I've had it help me write emails. I've done all sorts of things with it. You can see here the GPTs that are available. Again, you have to have a paid license to access these. These are all things you can try out. Someone created a sentiment analyzer, um, student feedback summary. These are all things that people at ASU created. Um, ChatGPT has some that they created themselves that you can try out. And there's a lot of others created in the GPT community. These are grayed out because ASU is not allowing us to use these. We can't use things that plug into say Canva or any third parties, which is really unfortunate, um, but it's a privacy issue uh, and a data issue I would imagine for ASU. So that's the general GPT dashboard. Pop over here, you can see the GPTs that I've created. I have two main ones that I created. I created Dr. Eddie and I created Sunny. So Dr. Eddie, I'll show you this one. Actually, let's go back to the edit view. Dr. Eddie is my personal advisor in the EDD in Leadership and Innovation program at ASU. So I'm a doctoral student at ASU. I'm getting my EDD. I'm about a year and a half in and I have so many questions. And I'm also an online student. So I get a lot of contact with my instructors, but oftentimes you have to schedule that contact, send emails, there's a delay. So what I did was I built my very own professor that answers all of my questions. Programming a GPT is really easy. I can walk you through that in just a moment, but I'll show you here what I have set up. You give it a name, you give it a description, that's what appears here, and then you give it instructions. You can enlarge that if you want. So I told it who it is. You're a faculty member. This is what you specialize in. Um, this is what you're going to do. Here is what your role is. And I always tell it you commit not to not making up information. Sometimes it'll still make up information. You just can't really stop the hallucinations, but you can see this is no coding. This is just a prompt. So basically at its heart, a GPT is just creating a really well thought out prompt to give your GPT chatbot a persona. And then you can offer conversation starters. Um, these are questions that will appear when people look at your GPT. Let's see if I paste this in here. So you can just click on one of these and Dr. Eddie will walk you through this for instance. 
there you go. It's giving me information how to identify a problem in practice. So stop that. Um, so you can see that's how you share the link again. Someone has to be able to um, access the paid version of ChatGPT to do that. And there's one more thing I did here. When you create a GPT, you can upload additional files. So I actually uploaded the program guide for EDD, uh, the EDD program. It's a really long uh, PDF handbook and information about the program. I also enabled web browsing and um, I also enabled Dolly. Um, I didn't enable Code Interpreter. I didn't think it was really necessary. That's for uploading files and things. Um, it's it's not super necessary for this, but you know, there's no harm in enabling if you want to enable that. So that's that one. I've used it a ton. I've asked it all the stupid little questions I don't want to bother my professors with. It's been a huge help to me. And I think it's actually something I'm going to use to focus on in my dissertation that's coming up. The other one, other one I created that I want to share is Sunny, your ASU Brand Standards Advisor. So this one is a result of my project that I proposed to get access to paid chat GPT in the first place. Um, the issue is at ASU is that we have a really strong brand. Um, if you know anything about ASU, you associate the maroon and gold, you associate this bold sans serif font, and there are a ton of guidelines to ensuring that everything we create at ASU adheres to the brand standards. It's a lot. So one of my tasks this past few months at ASU has been to update materials to adhere to the ASU brand standards. And when you're new to it, you have a general idea, maroon, gold, Helvetica, but you're not really sure where to go from there. And it's kind of overwhelming. So I created a chat bot that can answer any and all of your questions about it. So when you're configuring and testing out your GPT here, the left side is the configure, right side is where you can test it out. So I've been testing it out by asking it kind of like arcane information about the ASU brand standards. So things like what is the color code for turquoise? Now this one, is my test question because I noticed in my first iteration of this GPT, it returned just a general color code for turquoise from the internet, not the ASU turquoise. So now I can see that it's working because it says the color code for ASU turquoise is this. We can ask it, what are ASU's colors and how do I use them? You can ask it basically anything you want. It'll lay out all the colors for you. It'll lay out the color codes for you. It'll give you some guidelines as well. Maroon and gold are the core colors. Secondary colors should not dominate. Things like the accessibility. These are all great guidelines for someone that's new to implementing the brand standards. And it does link to the AC brand guide as well, which again, can be a little overwhelming, but I did program it in the latest version to have that be the last word. So I'll show you how I configured it. Again, name, description, uh, instructions. This one, I got really more in depth in the instructions. I was actually inspired by Zapier, which I'll cover in another video, which has a really nice uh, template for how to set up a chat bot. So this one, I gave it a role, an objective. I told it who its audience is, what the style is, and other rules. Please do not make things up. For the love of God, chat GPT, stop making things up. Uh, but these directions I found in this format created a really robust GPT that is very helpful. Um, again, I got some conversation starters here. Now, the most important thing that I wanted to share is that originally I had this set up for brand web browsing and I configured it again in the no code, just this box here, there's no coding for these things. I told it it should refer to the brand guide website for all of its information, but it was making stuff up. It was completely making stuff up. It wasn't actually adhering to this, even though I told it this is the one place that you should be looking and you shouldn't be making stuff up, still made stuff up. So what I did was, I didn't know Adobe could do this. I actually opened up Adobe Acrobat Pro, which again, I have access to thanks to being an ASU employee. You pop over to file and then create, and you can actually create from a web page. You can create a complete PDF from a web page and you can capture multiple levels. So all you have to do is copy the web address, pop that in. Say you want two levels, which will be the brand guide homepage plus like one level below, and then create, and it'll spin and spin and spin, and it'll take forever, and it'll create a massive PDF for you of that website. So that's actually what I did and why I ended up uploading. So then in the newest version of Sunny, I told it to refer to um, this guide down here, 
and um, to not make stuff up. So use this information that I gave you. You can still web browse, you can create images, you can do whatever, but this is going to be your one-stop shop for all of the elements of the ASU brand guide. And I found that actually providing it, the web page as a PDF, made it vastly more accurate than just telling it it can browse the web and use the ASU brand guide website. So that was a weird little quirk that you don't know about until you do things like this. Um, but as a whole, I found this to be very helpful. And this is something I've made publicly available to ASU. And once my license expires, which is very soon, this will be given over to the admins of the ChatGPT project and will live on at um, ASU. Uh, just really quick, I'm going to show you how to create a GPT. You just click create and it'll actually walk you through the GPT builder here. So you can tell it what you want it to do. It'll ask follow up questions and then you can always pop over to configure and you can tweak things here as you like. So super easy to create a GPT. It is disappointing that you can only share it with people to use if they have the paid version of ChatGPT. I have been playing with Zapier to create uh, chatbots. So this is something I've seen mentioned a lot as far as automation and AI goes in that automation. And they now have uh, basic chatbots that are in beta as well, which are based on ChatGPT. So Zapier, I've been having a lot of luck with um, creating a, a chatbot. The only issue is, is it doesn't have um, like a memory and I can't really save my threads in it, which has been a really nice feature of ChatGPT that I can come back to things again and again. So. That's it. That is the basic of GPTs in ChatGPT4. You can use them basically as chatbots for anything to help people, to talk to people, to ask follow-up questions, to provide feedback, to provide project information. You just have to be really careful to test it and make sure it's giving accurate information to your users. So what do you think? What would you use this for? I'd love to hear about it in the comments.